Hybridization provides a unique opportunity to look at bridging between two ideas and two concepts, that which we have our quantum mechanical model of the atom and valence shell electron pair repulsion theory or VSEPR theory. So hybridization is going to provide a bridge that exists between the two of them. Let's look at the problem that initially exists. If we look at the concept of the molecule of methane, we have a carbon atom with four valence electrons. Bonded to it, four hydrogens, each bringing their electrons. We know that this molecule is a tetrahedral shape. Yet, when one looks at the orbits that are traveling around the central carbon atom, we have a 1s orbital, which is spherical shape, and we have these two p orbitals, the px, 2py, and 2pz orbitals. Oh, by the way, this should be a 2s orbital if I look at the valence shell. This is spherical in shape, and these are perpendicular to each other with bond angles of 90 degrees. How do we go from 90 degrees to a tetrahedral arrangement? And that's part of our problem. If we also look at the arrangement of the atoms or the electrons inside of carbon in its valence shell, in the 2s we have two electrons. And here we have the remaining two electrons here with let's say the 2z orbital being empty. If we view this model of the atom, we can see that we have four domains, four orbitals where electrons are being shared. Yet when we look at this particular arrangement, well, we could perhaps see some sharing going on here or here, but what's going on here and, and how can we share electrons with this one when it's already full? So what we have essentially then, if we look at it diagrammatically, here are our p electrons. We can account for perhaps bonding in two of the cases. One of the cases here with the x orbital. So I'll put that hydrogen there. And we can get some bonding with the 2p y orbital here. But how do we bond with this one? Because this one essentially is already empty. It doesn't have any electrons in it. And the other problem is that angle in there would be predicted to be 90. And as I said, we need 109. The solution is the concept of hybridization. Before substances bond, there's some rearrangement that takes place with these electrons. So instead of having a configuration like this, what we view happening is these orbitals mix together or blend. So we mix together an s orbital and the three p orbitals, and we create a new shape. Now, let's take a look at what that new shape would be. They would blend to form four orbitals of identical energy and shape, but just different orientation. And so I'm going to represent that here by four blocks, these four orbitals. Again, it's made by mixing four orbitals together. We create four new orbitals of a different shape and geometry. Now, this shape is given a name because of the recipe that makes it up. We call these orbitals sp3 orbitals. And these orbitals are arranged in a tetrahedral arrangement when I group the four of them together. So what will happen is the four electrons that are present in here from carbon, initially, as I say, there was two of them here, and there might have been one of them in this orbit and one in this orbit. What happens now is I put one of them in each of these, orbit, of these orbits, the sp3s. And hydrogen can now come along and share its electrons. And so, diagrammatically, these hydrogens could share their electrons with each one of these orbits. And these orbits, the sp3 orbits, 
are arranged in a tetrahedral arrangement at 109 degrees. So before bonding takes place, we blend together orbitals to create the geometry which we require from the Vesper theory. So if we have a requirement for four electron domains, as we do in, say, something like methane, the fact that we need four electron domains means I'm going to mix together an s orbital and three p orbitals to create an sp3 shape. If I require three electron domains, that's going to require an s orbital and only two of the p orbitals, and I would create something called an sp2 hybrid, which would be trigonal planar in shape. That will come into play when we look at this example. And finally, if I need two electron domains, that's mixing together an S and only one p orbital, I create what's called an sp, which is a linear shape. And that happens, say, in something like carbon dioxide. So again, here's how I go about it. I start with the Lewis dot diagram of this particular structure, carbon in the middle, oxygen, two hydrogens. The number of valence electrons, I've got two from the hydrogen, four and six, so I have a total of 12. I start at my bonding sites, complete the octets on the outside, and if I put two here, carbon won't be satisfied, so I'm going to put two in here. So here I can recognize I have three domains. That then informs me that I require an sp2 hybrid. And the sp2 hybrid, the three of them mixed together, will create something of that geometry, which again, as you can see, is our trigonal planar shape. Carbon dioxide, we've seen it several times now, so I'll quickly go to its electron arrangement. We see two domains around that carbon there in the center. Hence, that requires an sp hybrid for mixing together just one s and one p. And here's what that orbital shape will look like. So the two of them blended together will form the sp hybrid, which, as I mentioned earlier, is essentially a linear shape. In our next program, we'll take a little bit more close look at how double bonds form. And that's our theory, our next program called Modern Bonding Theory. Thanks for watching.